Are demons real? What about ghosts and goblins? Cute little creatures that play silly little tricks on us on Halloween night? Or powerful and evil creatures that influence us to commit harmful deeds that destroy our lives? In his book, Bound to Lose, Destined to Win, Curtis Kelly describes his family's involvement in voodoo and witchcraft. Kelly is a young boy had an encounter with an evil presence. It gives us a whole new meaning to the expression things that go bump in the night. Next, on stories of the supernatural. My great, great grandfather, John Kelly, who was a slave owner, came from Ireland, a city in Ireland. There was a potato famine. He decided to stop fighting his own family members. He went down to the Caribbean and a place at that time was called Hispaniola. Hispaniola was one country, but today half of it's Dominican Republic, the other half is Haiti. He settled there in Hispaniola, the Haitian side, and he got a plantation and he bought some slaves. Slavery was real big at that time. And one of those slaves was named Pinky. Pinky was my great, great, great grandmother, which believe it or not was, from, I guess, from his siring or, you know, came from him. His family became sick, his crops started to fail because there was a curse placed on him by some of the, the Haitian slaves. Then he decided to go into, into Texas. He moved into Texas, took some of the slaves with him. And when he got to Dallas, Texas, he had about four or five slaves left, Cupid, Senior, Pinky, and a few other slaves. And from there, that's where my father was born in 1917. My father married my mother in 1946 or so and moved to the New York area and that's where I was born. My father didn't want any more children. At that time, it was about six or seven other brothers and sisters were born before me. He told my mother he didn't want any more. So my mother said, well, I'm pregnant now. I'm not going to get rid of, of my child. He said, yes, you are. He said, I already got it set up to take you to a back alley abortion clinic not far from a famous university there on the East Coast. And when my mother resisted having this abortion, he commenced to beating her and kicking her in the stomach and hitting her, trying to force the baby to come out or be stillborn. And so when that didn't work, he dragged her through the house and threw her in the car and took her down to where the abortionist was and they were already waiting for her. They put her on the table put her feet up in the stirrups, went inside of her with all kinds of weapons of destruction. And then they also was using types of pills and different things like that, making my mother swallow them to try to destroy me from inside the, her, her, her stomach and to her, uh, her womb area. And they worked on her for two or three hours, my mother said. And my mother, she actually felt like there was some hands inside of her blocking me from being destroyed. And when my father and the abortionist saw that they could not reach me, and they could not pull out any parts of my body, was trying to pull me out piece by piece, and they seemed that they couldn't find me, they, they decided, they said, well, they, there's no way that she can either not be pregnant, or if she is, we're just gonna leave the baby because it's too much trouble, we'll kill her in the process. And my father didn't want to kill her. He was just trying to get rid of another baby. And God saw to it that he, he spared my life. And from that, I'm here today. I was four years old when I started using drugs. Uh, my brothers were shooting heroin. Uh, when I asked them, I said, well, let me have some of that. And they said, oh, no, you can't have that. You, you're nothing but a child. You're old enough yet. And I heard a voice. It says, you don't have to listen to them. Don't worry about it. I'll show you how to get high. He said, go in the kitchen and pull the chair up to the stove and turn it on and take what I tell you in there and I'll show you how to huff. You know, and that's the first time I ever got into to huffing was at four years old. And he showed me what things to use. And like a, like a professional, I was doing that, getting high every day at four years old. And, and it just got, went from there. I was four years old and I got into other stuff and start uh, uh, smoking weed and different things like that by the time I was six years old. And, and I got to be 10 years old, my brother said, okay, now you're old enough. You can have some of this cocaine. And they showed me how to deal with the powdered cocaine and how to use it. And, and it just went on from there.
As Curtis grew older, he also realized his family was involved in voodoo, a type of witchcraft from Haiti. He also met a voodoo priestess who casted spells for love, money, and power, but for a price. The Haitian voodoo priestess, actually, she was a priestess in ha in, uh, from Haiti who lived in Brooklyn. See, everybody has a territory in, in, in witchcraft. It's just like drug dealers got a territory. Well, witches and voodoo people, they don't overlap a lot of times. They have their, their they say there's enough customers, customers for everybody to go around. So she, she uh, worked under, under my dad. She would act like she was a church evangelist. She would call meetings at our house and she would have women that come who have lost their husband. Not so much lost them because of death, lost them because he left her. And she would tell them, she'd say, uh, you want to get your husband back? I got a potion for you, I use you for you, I have a fetish for this and that and the other. For every problem she had, she had a solution for you. And she was teaching me how to do the very same thing. She said, you are the seventh child. You are the seventh child of the voodoo priest and you're chosen. And she told me, she said, you weren't supposed to be aborted a sacrifice. You were supposed to be taught. And, and, and I didn't understand any of those things what she was talking about, but I found out later what she meant. She meant that my father was trying to abort me, but actually he was supposed to save me for me to go down to be uh, trained. And that's what she said, I'm here to train you so you can go down to Port-au-Prince and, and do uh, uh, work under Papa Doc Duvalier and, and, and the palace there in Haiti. And uh, that's what she came to do. She came to, to train me. She was my teacher. Curtis continued to learn about voodoo, but even at an early age, he began to realize that all of his power came at a terrible price. Next, on Stories of the Supernatural. <laughs>